you saw that we were we were talking about language as a systematic device as a system which is inbuilt in us and uh, if if i ask you where is language located in us what will be the answer where is language located in us brain right it's it's question like how do we see how do we see anything with our eyes right right similarly if the question is where is language located the answer is how how do we know that answer is right and sounds very convincing but then the question comes to same brain and mind it, uh, that that we don't know whether it really comes to brain or not but how do we know it is located in brain because uh, usage of language is a cognitive process and all cognitive process are done by brain sure and uh, is language really a cognitive process uh, because we think when we speak right? so you are saying thinking is cognitive process right can we not think without language can we or can we not yes. we can yes. right how do you how can you think without language visuals, visuals. visuals. Memory. memory but how do we store such memories we don't know these things understand the question the, the what is not important is we need we do not need to know answers to all these questions right at least right away we but we we need to think about these questions at least right and uh, is language really a cognitive process keep keep this question in mind we'll discuss about it about it do we really need to think in language or can we not think without language okay these are these are some of the questions which are important for us to understand in general they they are not necessarily directly part of this course but anybody who understands something about language or wants to understand something about language these are the fundamental questions you will need to answer after you have acquired certain fundamental uh, aspects of language and when you can say i know about language right so uh, let's let me take you to more fundamental things and then we come to come to these questions so when we say language is located in human mind we also need want to say that it's a it's one of the most sophisticated product of human mind rather it's the only product which you can which you can evaluate in a systematic way we do many things with human with human mind and and all of them can be studied in a systematic way for example when we see something we can study how the process of seeing works right when we uh, what what else do we do with human mind what else do we do with human mind comparisons like mathematics logic logic mathematics what else memory memory in a, in a way it won't be too much to say if we say we do everything with human mind right can't we we as humans cannot function if human mind does not function in a particular way at least we cannot function the way we do one more qu question before we get into more fundamental questions uh, and this is again for you to think uh what are the things that involves language we we talked about thinking right i really want you to think very hard do we really need to think do we really need language to think communicating ideas communicating ideas of course and when you are thinking about this question do evaluate whether you need language for that or not right similarly communicating ideas you may have 
wonderful ideas, right? You may be doing wonders in different aspects of, of life. Can we do such things without language? Can you talk about mechanical engineering without language? We need to decide which language we need to talk in, whether we need Tamil or English, that, that's a much later question, that's much trivial question. But can we talk about anything without language? Mechanical engineering just happens to be an example. <coughs> inherently implies that we are using language. Exactly. So, talking without language is kind of redundant. As in, uh, it's pointless. That is what you are saying is it's not possible to do any anything which involves another person. No, I'm saying talking essentially has language. Sure, I, I get your point. What, let's let's remove the word talking. Let's let's say the word doing. Right? Can we do anything with others without language? And, and we, we do not want to get into the trivial aspects of this question. The important part is, in order to transact anything, we need language, right? Therefore, it is also called, besides this definition that I have been showing you since yesterday, it is also called a medium of transaction among us, a medium of construction of any knowledge, like you were talking about restoring memory. Or, or storing, mem storing memory or communicating about ideas, these types of things are parts of construction of knowledge. And we can't really either construct or transact about such things without language. Okay? Such is the significance of language. And one of the reasons why we probably do not pay much attention to the need of looking at language in a systematic way, because it is, it comes to us so naturally, right. It comes to us so naturally that we really do not want to be very serious about it. You all of you must have heard things like, we do not understand the value of the gift that we can see things, right. If you if you want to understand how fortunate we are that we can see without making much efforts, without difficulties, you need to talk to people who can't, right. The fact that we are able to walk without problems and if, if you want to understand how difficult it could be, then you need to talk to people who can't, right. Similarly, the way we learn to walk, the way we learn to see or we happen to see, similarly we end up speaking. This is what I mean when we say it comes to us so naturally, okay? and therefore it does not become such a, such a serious thing for, for us to get into. However, when you, when you get into the details of it, then you see the underlying system and get to know that it is really a complex system. Okay? And then we realize about its systematic arrangements. All right? Now, uh, we have looked at these things. We were, we were, working, about, we were working on these questions. Right? Let us talk about few more of them to come back to lang language learning. So, each one of us speak three, two, three, four languages. Right? One can ask you question, this question both ways. Why do we not speak just one? If the purpose of language is to communicate, why do we not speak just one language? It is rooted in geography. It is rooted in the language has been developed. So, so language has been developed? Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So, in, in other words, we are saying it is not possible to have just one language. No matter how important it is for communication and then we know 
that it, if it is important for communication, then it would have been much easier if we spoke, if everybody spoke all over the world, just one language, would not be difficult at all, right? Many of you must be familiar with uh, the artificial language that, com that computers or machines work with, right? Uh, I, I do not know names of all the languages, right? But I am assuming that machine A and machine v, B can communicate only when both of, of them have, both of them have same language, right? They, they have difficulty communicating even if they have one, one has higher version and the other has lower version. You, you see the limitness, limits of artificial languages. However, it is not important for humans to be speaking just one language and still we can communicate effectively over a long period of time or even in a shorter period of time, we do find a way to communicate with one another, right? Therefore, many languages being around has very little to do with the answer that we need language only for communication. Get this thing? Then how, how many languages do we speak in India? 1600. You found that? 1600. Do we know the names of all of them? No. Right? Uh, and we, it is okay not to know the names because that is not important. Right? And, and uh, uh, it is, what was the source of this information of 1600? Wikipedia. Google, besides Google. Where, do, where did the Google, where did Google get it from? Generally asking you these things just so that you know about them. One was Wikipedia, it was there at Wikipedia and I referred one more site, sir. I do not That's know. a lie. Uh, I am not interested in sites, so all I want to say. Many a times Wikipedia may not be a reliable source of information. That was from a survey done. Exactly. A census survey. That is what I am interested in. What I am saying is many a times Wikipedia may not be a reliable source. However, if you are looking at the references they are citing, then you can rely on the information. So, uh, it, and it is important for us to uh, in the beginning to, to know that one of the most authentic surveys that was done in India was around 1930. And it was done by uh, an anthropologist called George Grierson. Okay? And that, that's the, that, that is called, uh, the, the name of that project was Linguistic Survey of India. <coughs> okay? It was easy for George Grierson to do because he got, he got help from uh, British officials and uh, a British officer running smaller places. So, when they, they issued orders, they, they, they put their whole office on this work to find about language. It is not possible anymore for us to do. Because you know how our offices work. It, it, you tell them, tell someone to do something and they will really get it done for you, it is very difficult. So, and, and, and uh, I, I, I do not mean to comment on, comment on offices, but what I am saying because of the British system and, and their rigid uh, uh, administration, George Grierson got it done in 1930 and then he came up with this number, so 1650 or something. Now, uh, it is not really important for, for any one of us to know names of all of, all of them, but, but it just becomes a very interesting thing and curious thing that we speak so many languages. Okay? Then, then the next question is, how many languages are spoken all over the world? Something like 6000 or 7000. Right? 6,900, how much did you say? 6,909. 6,909, right? Now, if you compare these two numbers, what is the percentage of total number that is spoken only in India? 25 to 35? 20, 25 to 30, somewhere between 25 to 30. You see the linguistic diversity of this geography, right? It is not just one sixth of world's population, but it is 30 percent of the languages of the world spoken here, right? Uh, 
we have we we have talked about common things between languages and how they differ from one another right uh, we will be looking at some of some of uh, them in more details uh, okay and and I, I come back to the total number in a moment again uh, before that i want you to know that when we when we talk to people in general or even in in classes in systematic way most of the time the answers that come up are based on impressions right like like i like i i wanted to show you the thing that we definitely use language for communication but that is not the primary thing about communication primary thing about language okay we do use language for communication the the simple answer to what what i am raising is if it was only for communication then we would have just one or few of them to make it easier on the other hand when you see the total number of 7000 or 1600 they do not seem to be simplifying communication right therefore such an answer is an an, an impression that we, we think this is how probably uh, uh, language is important okay then when we start looking at it in a serious way the first distinction that we make and as many of you said language is located in human mind right when we learn language the role of human mind is very important right and it's it's one of the most sophisticated product of human mind so there are there are two aspects of language one is called i language and the other is called e language and these are not complicated terms it, they simply mean internal language and external language get it internal language and external language what do we mean by them and why we need to make this distinction is following internal language refers to the language here that is in human that is in our mind okay and and i'll elaborate that what we mean by language in our mind and everything related to language that happens in human mind when we study such things then we say or we think we are talking about i language okay e language is when it gets out of us the moment it gets out of here what does it become <coughs> spoken language of course but that that's part of society right anything out of us in terms of language is society and that's called the 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 uh, e language refers to everything that happens to external aspects of language that is for the purpose of interactions in society okay and whatever we do with society and language that is out of this is part of e language is what we call e language is this is this distinction making sense to you i language and e language okay when we are when we and again going back to i language when we study learning of language right <coughs> role of human mind in language and how human mind is how human mind stores language how language is processed in human mind all such things are part of uh, study within the domain of i language okay and it, it becomes interesting only at the level of i language many people many many studies make this distinction and and rightly so because not every study can include all parts of it 
So, so depending upon who you are talking to, they will tell you their study is more interesting. That is, if, if some, somebody is studying language as, as an external thing in society, they will tell you uh, uh, it becomes interesting only when you are talking about language and how it works in society and how culture is important and other parts of important, how these things are embedded in language, such things are more interesting. Depending upon, again, who you are talking to, if you are talking to p cognitive scientists and others who look at how lang uh, language processing and role of human mind in it, acquisition of language, they will tell you th that is the only important part about language. And, and, and that is the sociology of uh, any research or education. We think what we do is more important than everyone else uh, or at least we want to believe that. So, uh, that is the part of, uh, that is the distinction between I language and E language. Uh, we have looked at the distinction between language versus languages, clear, right? When we are talking about I language, we refer to language. Keep this in mind. We refer to language and languages is part of e-language. I, I think this does not require much of elaboration. The moment we say languages is part of e-language and, and the simple not, not proof, but simple, uh, simple idea to elaborate this is Uh, we, we, we can look at it, we do not need to go to laboratory for this. Think about the following question, you, if you speak two languages, Tamil and uh, English or Hindi and English, do you think you have two compartments in your brain? Are the words of these two languages stored in two different places? Yes or no? Do not know. We do not know. You can, you can say no, they are not stored in two different places, but we really do not know. Right? Then we, with that, the fact that we do not know, okay, one more question about that. And, and trust me, they, these questions sound funny or maybe at times ridiculous but they tell you something. Does it, does it pain? That is, does, is, do you feel any headache when you switch from one language to the other? No? On the basis of these things, we can say, they are all, all part of one thing, right? Or, or for that matter, when we look at human mind as a bigger thing and language as smaller thing in it, we do not even know which part of this mind <coughs> contains language itself. Forget about compartments of languages. Do we, do we realize where, here or here, this side? No? We, we, can, we can make sure that language is probably located here because, and, and this has been studied, this is not just part of a joke, that due to brain, da brain damage, we find language disorder, we find language loss and due to other kinds of injuries, we rarely find any disorder in language. And if at all, some other kind of injury causes language disorder, that is related to again human mind in a psychological way. Okay? So it, it has been established that language has huge connection with human mind. But we do not know which part of it for sure and, and at this stage I can tell you, it is not really that we do not know. There has been one study by Broca, heard this name before? No. And one part of human mind is called Broca's areas, Broca's area. The, this, this scientist what he did, he studied people who got language loss or some kind of disorder in language due to head injuries. And then this person finds that 
injury in a specific place on a specific site causes some kind of problem with language. And so, he made a, a broad generalization that probably that area is responsible for language and therefore, because it was done by him, so that area is called Broca's area. So, sometimes you will find people telling you that Broca's area is the area of language in human mind, get it? So, uh, but, but we really do not know, even if we believe Broca, we have no reason not to believe him, but even if we believe, we do not know if other areas are responsible for language or not, right? And then forget about finding smaller compartments about Tamil, Telugu and other things. If we go into more details of let us say a language called English, we do not know whether words are stored separately and then we pick words and make sentences. How does human mind make a sentence? Do we, do we have a grammar stored in one part and words in the other part and then we, we, we do it fast and come up with sentences without us even knowing because there are a lot of things that happen in human mind which we are not so aware of or so we, we cannot really keep up with our own mind. The kinds of things that are happening there, we really cannot keep up with, with all of them. So, but, so, so, keeping those things aside, the all I am trying to, trying to say is it is not really possible to find out, get it, get it? So, and then I want to bring you to the point that the distinction that we have made between language and languages, right? And we have talked about certain principles and parameters governing languages. So, those are part of human mind. What is not part of human? We, we, we have no evidence to say that languages are like English, Tamil, Hindi in human mind. But we can hypothetically say convincingly that what is part of human mind when it comes to language is principles and parameters, get it? And I will tell you more about that in, in, in due course or in a, in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, I, I hope that point is, that point is clear, we, we talk more about that when we talk about language acquisition. Let me, let me talk to you about next point. Uh, we have a, we have briefly talked about that. It is a pattern system. We, by, by now, we have only been talking that language is system. I have not given you any examples to show language is system or, or for that matter, we have talked about very few examples like certain examples of principles and certain examples of parameters that languages vary from, from one another and they are part of, they, they are what make language as a systematic thing. But look at, look at this what I want to say right now. It is a system of arbitrary sounds, okay. However, the whole thing what we know as language is not arbitrary, is a highly systematic phenomenon. We will be elaborating on this aspect throughout the semester. Many examples that we will be talking about whether we come back to this or not will be around this. But th therefore, it is important for us to know right in the beginning that it's, it has a huge role of arbitrariness in it. By it, I mean language. Language has huge role of arbitrariness in it in the sense that it is a system, it, it, to begin with it is a system of arbitrary sounds and I will elaborate that to you what I mean by arbitrary sounds in a, may, in a minute. However, language itself is not arbitrary at all and that is what we mean where it is a purely rule governed system. Nothing happens in language which is, which is uh, just for that. It is possible that we do not know everything that is happening in language, just like we do not know everything that is happening in human mind. But we know certain things on the basis of which we can say language is not an arbitrary 
phenomena. It is a systematic phenomena, it is a rule governed phenomena. Now, uh, let, me, let me give you a couple of examples at this point. So, when we say, uh, um, okay, let us talk about what we mean by arbitrary sounds. Okay. What is this? Mobile. Why do we call it mobile? Which is, and I, and I am not asking you a philosophical question. Okay, uh, you can say it's portable. Therefore, we call it mobile. My question is even not to that extent. My question is, if we all call this something else, right? If let's say we call this aeroplane. Will that be a problem? No, no, I know right now it will be a problem because if I ask you please give me your aeroplane, then we will not understand one another, there will be a problem, right? which is called breakdown in communication. So, we need, we need to call it the same thing. If we are talking about one language, then we need to understand that whatever it is called, both of us know the same thing that is going to relax communication, otherwise it will just simply break down. Right? We cannot choose our own words for things. Right? What is this thing? <coughs> Slide changer. I cannot call it anything else. Right? You cannot call it anything else. We need to call things the same way, that is for communication. But what, what I want to, to, to bring out is, if we all call this thing something else, then we will all call this something else, right? Uh, a pen, why is it called a pen? Or for that matter anything, why is it called that? This is called a desk, right? We could have called it a room, or it would not make any difference. Right? The, in short, and, and I am talking about a very significant point that naming anything is arbitrary. Any name is arbitrary to the extent that as long as we know what we are talking about, we are fine. Right? There is no reason why this should only be called a mobile. There is no reason why this should only be called a pointer or a remote control or whatever, slide changer. We could have called this also a pen and then that thing as remote. Get it? So, naming things is arbitrary and then if we call, let us say we have an object pen, again, again, one more time I will tell you, the meaning of arbitrariness is there is no reason why the word pen is associated with the object that it refers to. The association between the object and the word is arbitrary. Okay? At the same time, and if you understand that kind of arbitrariness, then you also understand why, what are the sounds involved in the word pen? Sounds involved in word pen. You understand the meaning of sounds? Words are made of sounds, right? So, what is the first word of pen and remember first sound of pen and remember I am not talking about letters and, and that distinction I will make again uh, when we move uh, ahead slowly. I, I do not want to talk about everything at a time. So, I want to draw your attention to very significant thing that I am talking about first sound, not the first letter. What is the first sound in the word pen? <laughs> pa. Very nice. Pa. And what is the first letter? P. P. So, at, at now you can begin to see that the letter P is only a 
device to represent a particular sound. Okay? And that device is just designed to be able, just designed for us so that we can write something. That is not how we speak. What we speak is the first, first sound is pa. And then you can begin to see that this sound is not specific to English alone. Do we not have this sound in our languages? We do, right? And then you will, you, you will see in a more clearer way that sounds are common in languages. Okay? Okay. So, let me, let me come back to this. So, why only pa and then what is the last sound in this word pen? Mm. No. Mm. And the middle sound? A. 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 Why only these sounds in that word? Okay? That is also arbitrary. Okay? What? And, and, and I promise you, I will I'll take you through certain more nuanced constraint on formation of a word to see that not any few sounds together makes a word. There, the, the construction of a word follows a very systematic constraint on them, which, which comes little later, but this is exactly what we mean by saying, when we say language is a system of arbitrary sounds. The association and, and when we come up with a word, the association between word and the object is also arbitrary, but what is not arbitrary is underlying system. What we call language, what we refer to as language is not arbitrary, which is when we say Tamil is a verb final language. Remember this thing, we did this exercise yesterday. Tamil is a verb final language or Malayalam is a verb final language or Hindi is a verb final language. It never happens in a strict word order that verbs will start coming in the middle of the sentence. Okay? Some of you can argue that I can come up with a sentence and a still good grammatical sentence where verb is in the middle of the middle of it, but that is called scrambling. Because of the strength of the language and I, again I will talk to you about that strength little later, it is possible in our languages to move words around and still retain grammaticality of that sentence. However, in some languages, it is not possible to move words around. Right? We can say, I am reading a book in our languages where we can scramble words around. Is that possible? How do we say this, word, this sentence in Hindi? I am reading a book. Anybody speaks Hindi? Everybody understand this sentence? Yes? Can we say, can we move words around in this sentence? No, 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 not, not changing anything, just moving words around. We can say that, that is still a good sentence, right? Can we do this with English sentence? Can I say, when, when, I, when I need to say, I am reading a book, right? Can I say, I book am reading? That sentence is not, and, and we are not trying to make fun of it. We are only trying to make a point that scrambling words around in a sentence, in a given language, may be possible, may not be possible. In languages like ours, it is flexible. It is possible, and because of that flexibility, we can still retain grammaticality of the sentence. However, the reasons why certain things are flexible and we still retain grammaticality does not mean that Hindi is not a verb final language or Tamil is not a verb final language. In a normal order of words, in a given sentence, verbs always come in the final position of a, of a sentence. That is what is a principled behavior in language. Get, get, get this point? And this is not arbitrary. That is, languages do not choose that to, until 2014 we will remain 
were final. See this thing? After uh, 10 years from now, we will change. This does not happen. It, it never happens. Okay? And this is part of a systematic phenomena. This is part of a rule governed phenomena. Get it? We cannot have a sentence in any language of the world without a verb in it. You must have heard this word, verb, right? I am I'm, I'm sure almost all of you must have gone through some or the other language class. What are the languages you have studied in a classroom environment? English of course for everybody, right? Hindi for some people or maybe many, many. Tamil? Nobody has studied Tamil in class? Okay, one person at least, two. So, you, when you, the, the only reason why I am asking this question is when you study language in a systematic way in a classroom, then you come up with these words, people tell you these things, nouns, verbs, right? subjects and objects. There, therefore, I am, I am talking about, uh, talking about this thing. So, uh, so far you may not have noticed this thing or you, you may not have taken a note of it or may not, you, you may not have been pointed to this, but there is no language in which you have a sentence and sentence does not have a verb. Okay? And, and I can give you an example of that. Can you give me a smallest sentence? Smaller than that. Go. Go. Very nice. That is a sentence. Right? But other things with one word do not form a sentence. For example, if I say hello, is that a sentence? No. See this thing? The smallest sentence go is a sentence because it is a verb, which tells you that you may not have anything else visible in the sentence. One, one can argue that when we say go, we mean you go. So, you is not really visible and therefore, it is not just a word, it is more than, more than a word and that is not what we are talking about right now. We are talking about visible elements and even when we have just one visible element, it is a sentence because it has a verb and other things do not. Therefore, we can say verb becomes the most important part of a sentence and we cannot create a sentence without a verb and that is true for all the languages of the world. Okay? This is part of, this is what tells us language must be a rule governed phenomena no matter whatever is the role of arbitrariness in it. All right? okay. uh, the, the, the last thing is, uh, I, I think this point should, should be clear by now. Uh, when, we, when we try to make the, these things explicit, right? then you can say, I am doing linguistics. I, these things fall within the areas of linguistics. And by explicit, I mean, it is not that you do not know the things that I am talking about. And again, I will be talking about lot of things, lot of things which as a speaker of any language, you already know. But such things are just not explicit. Okay? And this is just the, like, like take the example that we just, just talked about. It is not that you do not know that in, in the languages that you speak, for you to make a sentence, it is important to have a verb. Right? You know this thing, but it is just not explicit to us all the time. And it is not a fair question to the speakers of Telugu or Tamil or Hindi or any, any or for that matter English or French, for anyone to ask them this question. That, do you know this rule in your language? This is not a fair question to ask them. because people learn these rules, the speakers of different languages learn these rules automatically. 
and the word automatic is very important we will be elaborating on that okay we don't know that and and i and i'm using the sentence very carefully we can say in when we are talking about language that we can we can we can say language happens to us do you, do you realize when you get fever when you get fever no no you realize but do you realize when it is coming to you i mean it doesn't come to you knock your door say i'm going to stay with you for 3 4 days that doesn't happen it just happens to you we can we can extend the same logic that language from the very beginning starts happening to us okay and i'll elaborate on that uh, a little in in more details for longer time shortly so this is what linguists do and this is what happens in linguistics now i we have a we don't have too much of time but uh, we'll try to justice try to do justice with at least one of one of these things right and then we will discuss the remaining part of it tomorrow these are not this not again very serious questions related to the domain of this this course because most of the things in this course are going to be about i language okay however these are important things just like the numbers of languages uh, spoken either in india or in other other places to know that there are just so many languages not just few uh, similarly these things are important for us to know so if someone asks you what's the national language of india no we have no national language how about others yeah. we have no national language uh, why what is hindi it's official language first official language the second it's official official language. language of india right and this is this is an important thing to know i must tell you many of us many people have this confusion many people will tell you i i i don't want to blame anybody whether purposely or or ignorantly that hindi is the national language of india that's not true india does not have a national language it has the the state policy on language says it only has official languages somebody said it's first official language does it mean we have second one too so that's not true it's just like we do not have a national language it's also true that english is not second official language and the word in the constitution has been chosen very carefully in india is the only nation in the world which has a language component in its constitution okay It, you you may not be aware or maybe you are i am not trying to trivialize it or underestimate you when did india get independence <coughs> understand we know we know this thing when did we get our republic set up that is when did the constitution get in effect january 26 remember we celebrate two different things 15th of august and 26th of january what happened on 26th of january constitution came into effect why did constitution not come into effect on 15th of august 1947 we didn't have one we didn't have one we saying that we created this big document in 2 years only that's not true many of the many parts of constitution i i'm not an expert on constitution so i cannot tell you this thing with with uh, uh, authority but many parts of constitution were already accepted from the existing documents around that time you may may hear many a times even these days that we certain things we are following from british system we are not following from british system per se what we mean is we adapt adopted such things from british system in our constitution what delayed acceptance of that document for two more years was a debate on language there was a committee set up it was called 
that that is famously known as constitution assembly debate okay there was a chairman of that 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 uh, assembly and then all kinds of debate took place the longest debate was about language okay if you are interested in this it, these documents are available online uh, i'm not sure if it is available on wikipedia or not but you will definitely find documents related to constitution assembly debates and then such documents relating to language not not necessarily you have to read that but if you are interested in this sometime you can look at it what happened was the the decision about language took longest time they still did not settle this question after the long and it it happens normally that when we do not have a consensus we settle down with some compromise formula and that was the most significant thing to come up with and this is where this question is important that english is not second official language like hindi in that assembly debate in that in those debates many people wanted to declare hindi as national language okay many people wanted to declare hindi as national language but that did not happen what happened was hindi was declared as an official language of india which was also very difficult okay then english was declared as associate official language of india and there is a difference between first and second when we say something first and something second we are trying to put them in order and when we say associate official language that is because it was put in place at par with hindi so you can it's it's not second it's just one and associate you may see even now after six how many years of independence 60. 60 or so many years of independence that people talk about many things in english even in our parliament that that's the reason for this and then uh, then uh, one more thing i tell you and then we we'll stop we will talk about rest of this thing these things tomorrow uh, it was also decided that we will review this question of english after 10 years okay which was around 1960 60 61 or 62 do you know something significant happening around 1962 63 china war pakistan wars and one more significant aspect significant thing that happened was the first prime minister of india pandit nehru died around the same time around 63 64 and if you look at our political system carefully there were lot of instability at that time in political sense and then this question get not did not get revised at that time did not was not brought for revision and the more we moved ahead in time more difficult it became to revise this thing and until today everybody just wants to leave it the way it is because you can understand the sensitivity involved with issues related to language Th this is the this is the position on on it national language official language and a state policy state policy on language the last part that i told you that people do not want to discuss is my addition okay this is not official okay but as you can see it's true that people don't want to discuss and rightly so because it has potential for many 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 issues and this is the only time when we are talking about these external far too external things about language uh, we will be re, we will be restricting to i language and uh, also one more thing uh, uh, i want to say with which we want to conclude a systematic study of language in a scientific fashion and particularly the aspects of language which are rule governed takes place not with emotional issues so many of the many of the things that i am going to be talking to you about is has has no no association or relation with anything emotional about languages in fact if you understand in the last so many years nothing scientific can be done when you when you bring in emotional issues in it right science science doesn't move any further after after that so knowing very well 
that language is a marker of identity, it has potential to create many problems in, in the real world. Many of the things that we will be talking about is related to I language and only scientific aspects of language. Okay? However, we will still discuss the, the last two things tomorrow, which is the distinction between language and dialect and language and variety. I invite you to take a look at these things like you have looked at uh, a number of languages in India and around the world. I am very happy about it. So please, please look at these things also. We begin talking about it tomorrow. Thank you.